As film biographies go, Malcolm X is a great triumph and Spike Lee should be commended for a magnificent job in putting it all together. Denzel Washington is magnificent here in a career making performance as Malcolm X, a man who underwent many transitions in his life in just 39 years of life before his tragic assassination in February of 1965. Mr. Washington gives the nuances of this man in flux to us in very compelling ways as he goes from a petty thief and hustler and pimp to a man who's put in prison and undergoes a metamorphosis again to become a leader under the Nation of Islam's Honorable Elijah Muhammad and then undergoes another transformation when he steps out of that limelight and becomes a political giant in his own right, a human rights leader fighting for the causes of black people everywhere around the world. And then undergoes another transformation, a spiritual transformation this time on his pilgrimage to Mecca in Africa in 1964. Malcolm X, the film, is as sweeping as the life of Malcolm X itself. And Spike Lee and his film uh, participants really bring this to life magnificently. Angela Bassett plays Dr. Betty Shabazz. Al Freeman Jr. plays the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Delroy Lindo plays West Indian Archie. Albert Hall plays Baines, a composite character Malcolm meets in prison. And Malcolm in real life had several father figures in his life after his father was murdered by the Ku Klux Klan in Omaha, Nebraska. Malcolm had to find fathers to guide him through a really very magnificently interesting life. He got the father figure tutelage of West Indian Archie and got more father figure tutelage again. He had to find another father in prison who guided him through and then find another one in Elijah Muhammad and find another one in the, in the faith and the Lord Allah in the Muslim faith. And really that was the look at the sweeping imagery of this man's life. And it's a really complex task to put this on film based on the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to Alex Haley, Malcolm X is a worthy, worthy part of your time. If you have three hours and 21 minutes, please do invest them in watching this film. And I also urge you to read the autobiography itself. It is one of the most important works you will read. It's a really good look at a man who goes through transitions in life, just 39 years of age, when he was tragically assassinated in 1965. And the book really captures who he was and who he was shaping himself to be. And it's very difficult to transition like that in such a young, young, short period of time on the planet. And he became someone who a lot of people had initially feared and reviled, blacks as well as whites in this country. And he became somebody who really was a universalist. Malcolm X, the film too, is very universal. Arguably, it's Spike Lee's most universal work. And yet, it was poorly received at the box office, making just $48 million. It's not really that money is a concern here, although Spike faced certain challenges for sure during the making of this film. As Warner Brothers and the Completion Bond Company shut down production, and he had to do something that Malcolm himself would have been proud of, going to fellow black entertainers and getting them to contribute money to keep this production going. And with that, he was able to shoot in Soweto in South Africa as well, and really give this film the appreciable broadness and depth that it richly deserved. Mr. Lee is to be commended, as is Denzel Washington and the rest of the great cast involved, and the great music that accompanies this film too. Ernest Dickerson's visual styles are outstanding as well. It's really one of his finest hours as a cinematographer. This film is a must for all of us. We really should watch Malcolm X. I'm Omar Moore, far-flung correspondent for Roger Ebert.